is uh, Senator Pascal Mooney. I'd like to welcome Minister Bradford to the House. Senator Mooney, you have uh, four minutes. Thank you very much indeed for taking this particular motion, which I raised under the order of business some weeks ago. I'm also grateful that the Minister for Health has taken the time from his busy schedule to be with us. I want to put on record straight away that, that in the context of this motion, I am not calling for a suspension of the vaccination programme at all. But what I am looking at is those mothers and their daughters, specifically daughters, who uh, a growing number in this country uh, are, in my opinion, not being treated uh, in a holistic manner for the traumatic physical and mental uh, side effects that have, that have hit them f coincidentally or otherwise within a couple of days of receiving this vaccination. We are also here today in the shadow of a high court uh, high court proceedings that are being taken by the mother of a daughter who received the HPV vaccine um, and she is asking that an order restraining the Health Products Regulatory Authority, HIPRA, which monitors health products in Ireland, proceeding with the use of Gardasil in any vaccine programme. Her daughter is now disabled to the point she needs to be cared for on a permanent basis. This is all from today's Irish Times. Uh, um, uh, from yesterday's Irish Times. I, I'm, I'm using, citing that particular example as one of the many uh, that one can read on the Regret website, which is a group of parents that have set up a support group. Internationally, there is growing, growing concern about the use of Gardasil, which I'm hoping the Minister will at least acknowledge. To date, uh, Japan has suspended the uh, vaccination programme. Denmark has asked the European Medical Agency to review the vaccine. What I'm really asking for here, though, um, is that there would be some acknowledgement by the Irish health authorities that there is something intrinsically wrong uh, medically uh, with the uh, over 100 girls that have now been identified by regret, the support group, as having similar type symptoms within days, within days of receiving the vaccination. And I am very aware that the entire medical establishment in this country and your own department have set their face against having any discussion or investigation about this. They're basing it on, well, it would, it's going to happen anyway, that every medicine and every vaccination has side effects and this is within the tolerable level. But, but when you drill it down, Minister, there are parents who are spending huge sums of money on trying to get treatment for their daughters. And I would ask that at least that there might be some recognition of the financial crisis that many of them are facing as a result of this, and who genuinely believe that it is as a direct result of the vaccination. I'm also aware, although it's anecdotal, and everything I've said so far on the record is factual, by the way. This isn't about scaremongering or anything. This is factual. The, the Danish government have given seven million kroner for an, an independent investigation. The Japanese have suspended it. There's also the EMA are looking at an evaluation of Gardasil and Cervarix uh, in, initiated by the French government. So it's not as if these are isolated cases. There is a growing body of international opinion now that suggests that something, something is wrong somewhere. And all I am pleading with you is that you would at least, from the Irish perspective, and I appreciate that HIPRA are engaged in the EMA evaluation that's currently underway. But I would hope that there might be some recognition that the trauma that's been suffered by these children, that it would be recognised by the Irish health authorities. That, for example, that they might be able to get some financial benefit. They may be entitled, they may be granted medical cards, which has happened in the case of, of other conditions in previous years. Something along those lines. But that at least that there might be some recognition that there is something wrong somewhere along the line, and the parents genuinely believe that it is as a direct result of the HPV vaccination. But I want to reiterate, this isn't about suspension of it. This is about acknowledging that there is something going on out there, and that the Irish government's health authorities would not turn their face away from a growing body of international opinion, from, from member states who themselves are now beginning to acknowledge that there is something there and that we would at least join that particular chorus that is growing and I don't believe it's going to go away. Okay. I want to uh, thank Senator Mooning for giving me the opportunity to update the House on this important matter. 
Uh, firstly, I want to acknowledge the concerns of families who believe their daughters have experienced adverse reactions and health issues after receiving the HPV vaccine. In the meantime, the EMA has advised healthcare professionals that available data does not warrant any change to the use of the HPV vaccines. Healthcare professionals should therefore continue using them in accordance with their current product information. Any changes to this advice will be made following the outcome of the review. Brief question, Senator. Yeah, I, I, I thank the Minister, um, and I'm glad that he has put on the record that there are 921 reports of suspected adverse reactions. Uh, also, um, to say that the symptoms that he has outlined in the same paragraph are short-lived, tell that to the parents of the 100-plus, with respect, Minister, who, are in, who have been experiencing much more serious medical and emotional and mental conditions for years after, two, three and four years, uh, who got the vaccination at 11 and 12 years of age, uh, uh, citing the, the, the current court case. All that I have asked, and it hasn't been forthcoming, is that there would be at least some acknowledgement that there is something going on in relation to this. And one last and final question is, why is it that the Health Authority, the HSE, in providing the PAC uh, to parents uh, and under the vaccination programme, do not provide the pill the, program, the, the, the information leaflet that is provided by Gardasil, Merck themselves, they actually provide a, a different information package. And I have read the information leaflet that accompanies the, uh, the HPV Gardasil vaccine, and it, it makes for frightening reading. And I, I also know that anecdotally that there are GPs around the country as a result of this growing concern about the efficacy of Gardasil and about its possible side effects uh, are, are not recommending that the vaccination should be given. So there are issues that you as Minister obviously right. cannot ignore, but I'm specifically asking, are you happy with the fact that the information leaflet provided by Merck, who, provi who, who, who manufactured Gardasil, is not provided to parents before they sign the consent form? Yeah, I am advised that all the information provided to parents about the vaccination is prepared from the available licence documentation for each vaccine. This is the summary of products, characteristics, the SPC and the patient information leaflet. The information is presented in clear, simple language and approved by the National Adult Literacy Agency so that it can be understood by all adults as the average reading age in Ireland uh, is, 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 low, is low, lower than the adult age. Prior to all school immunisations, parents receive an information pack